latest from your perspective where you are so we can tell the rest of call. Now, if you think about robots, what do you imagine them doing? Maybe taking over the world, Terminator style, assisting the rebels in Star Wars, or maybe flogging you instant mashed potato. <laughs> the main challenge was to be able to, to make a robot that has full localised speech recognition, generation, can tell you exercise, dietary advice and live in your home for four weeks and still work come the end of it. It's not like a Dalek, it can, can it get upstairs to tell you off for lying around in bed when you should be exercising? In that sense it's quite similar to a Dalek, it can't go up the <laughs> stairs, it can still move around the home and find people but... So it's based on the Pepper robot, so it's about 1.2 metres tall. It's got the whole upper torso of almost like a humanoid with a large tablet-like screen in its chest and it's got a big base with some wheels on it. So this kind of builds on some previous research and quite a lot of what's going on at the moment with human-robot interaction. There's a lot of cases where you can just read something in an app or you can try finding a book and read up on about it. But there's a sense of there isn't the encouragement and motivation there. Whereas if you've got this embodied humanoid robot pestering you to do some exercise, is that more likely to do it? And are you going to enjoy it more? How did you monitor the interaction? Because I'm guessing you, you put your robot into somebody's home and it's obviously filmed for television, but how did you, as a scientist, um, monitor the interactions between the families and the robot? That bit's quite the interesting bit because the robot itself is was left completely to its own. There was no monitoring of the robot done. It was solely... It has its own AI, it self-generates and comes up with things, and it just stored the data over time. So as the family interacted with it, it stored up a log of which exercises they did and when and what they asked. So afterwards we could analyse all of that. We don't want to give away everything on the, on this show, which is running tonight, tomorrow on BBC Two. Six robots and us, but generally how did the families, we had six families, was there a theme as to how they got on with the robot or did it differ for widely? It, well, the robot stayed with one family and it's safe to say they weren't expecting a robot like that, shall we say. <laughs> so, what, what do you think, Jake? I mean, clearly you follow this, for most of us it's science fiction. What are the roles that robots will be undertaking in our homes over the next century, do you think? Well, robots going into the homes are something that's slowly started to get integrated. You've got robot vacuum cleaners that can go around. You're, you're getting televisions that you can talk to to change the channel. All of these are slowly and steadily emerging into robots. So over the next decade, I don't think they're going to be dusting and serving you breakfast out of the washing, out off clean plates from the washing machine. But... There's no reason why they're not going to start to become more apparent, especially in more commercial areas, somewhere in shops, for example. 
at receptions or it's interesting isn't it that i know i haven't read about them being used for keeping people company perhaps elderly people just for almost like a sort of automated companion do you think they will become that sophisticated that we can have a chat and feel like it's a real entity we're talking to well, that's one of the very big challenges at the moment with robotics. So with Fitbot, it has emotional recognition. It can tell if you're happy, if you're sad, if you're upset, and all manner of things in between. So we're now getting to a stage where the technology is there to understand a person more. It's just a case of being able to maintain a conversation, keeping track of what you've said, what's relevant to say, and how that would affect you, the person using it. It's a fascinating subject, Jake. One final question for you. Yeah. If it pesters you to go out for a run too much, can you turn it off? <laughs> yep, you can just pat it on its head and it will go to sleep. So. I hope only children would like that. Thank you so much for joining us and Happy New Year to you. Why, thank you and Happy New Year too. Thank you. How fascinating. You'd be to see all about that. That was Jake Sutton, uh, Shaw Sutton there, um, who programmed that uh, Fitbot at Plymouth University. Six robots and us airing on BBC Two. You can see it two parts tonight and tomorrow.